Hey guys, Eric with Blue Line Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Your time's important to me as always. And what we're going to do in today's time is we're going to talk about spinner baits. And I'm going to show you guys how to make your own custom made spinner baits. Stick around. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, guys, let's get going on this. First things first, first thing you're gonna need is the um, spinnerbait body here. I prefer the bullet head style. Uh, there's other ones out there too. There's the minnow and kind of a guppy head. There's a banana head, um, all different types and sizes, but I like the bullet style over the years I've found. I think it comes through timber better, which I fish a lot of, and uh, I think it's pretty, pretty weedless, pretty streamlined as it comes through the water column and hits the weeds and such. So that, that's just what I prefer. You can use whatever it is that you want though, style-wise. I uh, used to make my own heads and bend my own wires, you know, from scratch. But I, I found it's just easier to buy these pre, pre-made uh, bodies like this. So that's the first thing you're going to need. Then you're obviously you're going to need some blades. In this, I went with Colorado blades, and I'm going to make one of my backwater bluegill spinner baits that are really popular. Um, they're great in stained water, and I've sold a ton of them over the years uh, for guys that fish a lot of those dirty and stained water conditions. But anyway, so this is a number four Colorado blade, and this is a number two um, Colorado blade. Now, if you're not familiar with the blade types and uh, shapes and sizes, some of the other uh, baits like this one here, for example, this is a willow leaf, and when I use a willow, I usually prefer like a number four and a half, which is what this is. And then on this other bait I've got over here, one that's uh, really, really done well for me over the years. This is a little unusual here. This is a four and a half willow, but in the front, it's what's called a roto blade. Uh, up north, I think they call them an always spin um, kickstand blade, but it is one that I have found has a different vibration and a different pitch than a lot of the other blades that are out there. And coupled up, especially with this willow, and a Colorado, but this willow for sure, it is a fish catching machine at certain times of the year. So some other things you'll need, guys. Obviously, you're gonna need a, uh, a swivel to connect into that. See if you guys can see that well, hopefully. And this swivel here, I usually like to use um, either a number 10 or a number eight swivel. Sometimes a 12, this one here is a 10, so that's number 10, and it's actually a roller swivel, so you need yourself a swivel. You'll need a split ring, okay? That's going to be connect that back blade in, I'll show you in a second. And this is a number three clevis, and these clevis are just something that connects on the wire here, uh, the arm here, above the spinner bait body to give that front blade rotation. You also need a little bit of tubing for a spacer. You can use whatever kind of spacers you want. You could stack up beads and such, and I'm going to show you those right now, um, and, and make your spacer, but I prefer the plastic tubing because I can get the exact length that I want each time with that. So, the next thing, like I just mentioned, was beads. You can get them in copper colored. You can get them in uh, nickel. This is the gold or brass color. Um, I prefer these right here. I have to look at the size. I think you have one eighth is on these, but I prefer the hollow beads rather than the solid beads. Um, I think it gives the, the arm a little bit more vibration coming through the water. When they're a hollow bead, there's not as much weight on that arm. Uh, that's just me though, so you can use whatever style bead you want. You can use plastic ones, metal ones, whatever, but you're going to need yourself some beads too. Also, a pair of uh, split ring pliers right here. Very handy. And you're also going to need a pair of needle nose pliers, preferably though, if you can see these. I'll try and put them up here. They are round. Uh, round edge pliers right here to get that curve in the bend right here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, right here is where you're going to need these to come in really handy for that. With that being said, here's the components. Let's get to it. So for this particular build here, I'm going to use the uh, copper colored beads to give, I like using the beads up here on the spinnerbait arm to give it a little bit of accent, but anyway, I'm going to use the, the gold beads to match up with the main blade color, which is going to be right here, um, this um, copper colored number four Colorado. So let's get going on this build. So guys, what I want to do first is, I like, you'll see spinnerbaits built in a lot of different ways. I like having a bead at the front of the, the lead blade, because I think it helps keep weeds and just gunk out of the um, I think it helps keep it out of the clevis a little bit better. You'll see a lot of them that are built that, that don't have that. But my personal experience, uh, that's what I like old Blair. Because I fish a lot of places, too, that are really full of a lot of uh, a lot of moss and just a lot of gunk. And I think it helps clear that out a little bit. So anyway, I'm going to take this spinnerbait arm here. 
push it through and just thread it right on there like that and it'll slide right down to the front of the R-bin. I prefer R-bin style baits. Some guys like the closed eye. Uh, I don't because I found where the, the line can get caught up in that closed eye sometimes. It pinches and you break fish off. So I uh, really like the R-bins. I've never had a problem with it sliding up and down the line. You tie a good knot, you're not going to have that issue. So second part here, I'm going to take my number two Colorado right here. I want to run this clevis through. Hopefully you guys can see how I did that there. Then I'm just going to take the spinnerbait arm and push it through each side of the clevis right here. And then I'm going to take another, another bead on the back side. So here we got the, the bead in front and behind this lead blade. Uh, I like the beads on it because I think when it's got water pressure on it, it helps this clevis turn a little easier. And it also, once again, I think it helps keep stuff out of that, that really small um, hole you see right there that's at the front of the back of the clevis. So that's just my experience on it. So we've got this on there. Next thing we're going to do right here is we're going to put a spacer on there. So guys, we got the spacer tubing on here. We're just going to run that right down on there. I like to run on that, run it on there till you can see the distance on it. But you know, usually it's the better part of half an inch of spacer is what I like to put right there. It's definitely going to make a difference the distance you have between the front and the back blade. That's my experience. It changes the vibration pattern. It changes the pitch of the bait. You can experiment with what you want. Uh, I mean, you can move this way up. You can move it where it's almost touching. But um, you definitely need some space in there. But it's definitely going to change the action of the bait. I found this distance about right here is about what I need to get what I'm looking for out of a spinner bait. So the next part here, I'm going to just take this, uh, this tubing right here. I'm going to use my little scissors. I'm going to cut them right off. And I'm going to take this, push my spacer down. Now I've got it up here and I'll move it back down in just a second because the next part here is where I'm going to make my bend in this wire. So this is where the round pliers come in super handy right here. So I'm going to take this, lay this nice and flat. And I tell you what, I'm actually going to get a little block of wood here to raise it up so I can get it nice and even under there. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I want to put my bend in the end of the spinnerbait arm here, I'm going to use my, my round nose pliers right there, the little needle nose that are round, it gives it a nice curve to it. I've got this block of wood here just to give it a little bit of leverage where I can get my hand down a little lower to roll that well. I go about halfway up on the, uh, on the pliers, this is the size bend I like in it. So about right there, I'm going to grab it right towards the end, sorry my hands are shaking some, but they always do. Then I'm just going to roll that right up. Now you can see we got a nice little, oops, sorry. We got a nice little bend right here, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now we can do the back blade assembly. Okay, guys, I'm going to take my number four Colorado blade. Got the uh, split ring here in my uh, pliers, and it just makes it easier to hold on to it. And you can see I've started it right there. Once I get it started, I can use my pliers because I've got kind of fat fingers, sausage fingers there. I can roll this split ring right on there. So now we got our split ring on. Next thing is going to be to put the swivel on there. Alright guys, so now I'm going to fit this, this swivel on here. And it goes on just like the blade did. Use my split ring pliers. And now I'm just going to work this all the way around. We've got that on. Okay guys, so now we've put the swivel on the bend we made in the end of the spinnerbait arm. You guys can see there's a gap right here. I don't want that quite much of a gap. So what I'm going to do is this is a different set of pliers. It's just a split ring, but it's got a it's got a little groove piece in the middle, which is perfect for closing off this eye some right here. Oops, let me get it in there. Sorry guys, my hands shake, but it is what it is, right? Now I'm going to crimp this down right here just a little bit. I don't want to bend it too far. Now you can see there's a little bit of a gap here still, but when I push this spacer tubing down it's going to fill up that perfectly i want it to fill up the top of the um i want it to fill up the top of the bend and fill up that gap and i've never ever had a problem with that sliding out and i want to say something else too about swivels this is a roller swivel on here you can use roller swivels crane swivels you can spend a lot more money and buy premium swivels i'm going to be honest guys i've been doing this 20 plus years <laughs> I've done pool tests on these, I've fished them, I've won tournaments on these. I do not see 
a big difference in swivels when it comes to crane roller and premium as far as paying that much more for a swivel. Just get you some basic roller or crane swivels. They do a great job. I don't think you need to spend a ton of money on swivels. That's just my two cents on that. All right, guys. So now we've got the uh, spinner bait assembled, all except for the skirt. Now what we're going to do is going to take the skirt. And if you've never messed with skirts before, the short end, let me see here if I can get this a little better view for you guys. The short end is what you want on the back end. The long end is what you want coming over the top. Okay, so you're going to take this short end. It's going to go towards the bottom. The long end is going to be the same side that the hook goes through. So I'm going to take my hook, push it down through here, and I'm going to push this all the way up to the collar that's on that spinner bait. Now, I like to separate all the strands ahead of time, especially if I'm making these for a customer because I want it to look good and I want it to perform good because these strands tend to stick together right here. But that right there now is a backwater bluegill spinner bait and it is super easy to make. I mean, you guys saw, uh, you can start knocking these out and like when you, when you kind of get a little assembly line going, 10, 15 minutes you can knock a bait out. No problem at all. So that's it. You see how easy it is to make these spinner baits. If you're a spinner bait fanatic like myself, or you just enjoy fishing them, or you like tinkering around, making your own baits, or you think you want to get into lure building, the spinner bait is a super easy bait to start with to make your own baits and catch fish on them and build some confidence in them. I'll leave some links down below where you can find the components that I used. You can find them on Jan's Netcraft, Amazon, Bass Pro Shops. There's a whole litany of places online where you can find these com components to make your own baits. Also, if you got something out of today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like and bell notification button as well. I really, really appreciate you guys watching. And as always, remember, get out there and fish.